Hello and welcome. In today's episode, Dr. Nora, I take you through how artificial intelligence can be used to diagnose your heart. As a general practitioner, I have patients come in on the daily now with reams and reams of paperwork where they've put their medical information, their symptoms onto online chatbots such as ChatGPT, hoping to find a diagnosis. Now, whilst I'm all for patient education, I must issue a few warnings here. Firstly, privacy. Is your data being harvested and where is it being stored? Secondly, the accuracy of using such chatbots. Now, I did a video before in the past about using ChatGPT to diagnose your medical ailments, but more recently, and I'll have a video about this very soon, is I noticed that these platforms can actually be quite politically motivated. I actually gave ChatGPT a basic set of symptoms for a patient presenting with ADHD. The only thing that I changed was the gender of the patient. For the male patient, it said nope. And for the female, it said, yes, this is ADHD. Shocking. So for this particular experiment, I'm going to be using an offline artificial intelligence that is called Diagnosis Pad, which means that it's offline, meaning that all of the patient data is preserved onto the device. There is no cloud processing. And I'm going to be testing out to see how well it performs if I add in some sensor information into the AI and see if it changes the diagnosis of the clinical case. For this, I'm going to be presenting it with a case study of Mr. Gregory. Mr. Gregory, to you and I, is a 64-year-old gentleman who's actually going to have a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation. This means that his heart is beating erratically and in an uncoordinated fashion, meaning that he might have symptoms of shortness of breath and not feeling all too well. But we're going to keep it really simple for the AI and we're going to see, is it able to pick things up and does the diagnosis modify or change to the better when we add in some information about his heart rate? Let's take a look. Hello, Mr. Gregory. Oh, hello, doctor. How can I help today? Well, doctor, you know, I'm 64 years old now. And for the past two months or three months, I've been feeling really short of breath. And also I'm feeling quite dizzy as well. We're going to pause it there and we're going to see just what the artificial intelligence is thinking at this time. Now, of course, this is really just a hypertal case. And naturally in a real consultation, you'll probably have a lot more information, but let's just see what this AI has come up with. Interestingly, it's come up with his first diagnosis as a pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary embolism is essentially a clot in the lungs, which certainly can cause and can present with shortness of breath, which is a really viable diagnosis. But let's just see why it thought of pulmonary embolism as its first differential diagnosis. When you click into the app, it does tell you what each condition is and why it thinks that. So it is contextually aware as to what the patient has described in their consultation. So let's take a little look and see. It already says it's quite difficult because not much information, but based on this information already provided by Mr. Gregory, so it's remembered his name, it says that um, there's a couple of areas of concern that may lead to a suspicious issue. So he's 64 years old. He's experienced persistent respiratory issues, such as very brief episodes of freak bouts, bouts or shortness of breath. Um, which could be multiple causes in older adults, such as heart disease, lung diseases, such as COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or blood clots. So that is very plausible. Now, it does actually say a second diagnosis or differential diagnosis is atrial fibrillation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that and see why it's chosen that. It's basing this on a 20% possibility. So it hasn't really said it's number one, but let's see why it says that already. Again, it says what atrial fibrillation is and in terms of um, the heart is beating irregularly and rapidly and that can cause dizziness due to low oxygen levels. Okay, so we know that the primary differential diagnosis so far is pulmonary embolism and then atrial fibrillation and then further COPD, which is called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a lung condition relating to those who have smoked for a long period of time causing lung damage. But what happens now if we take a listen to Mr. Gregory's heartbeat and feed that information into the artificial intelligence and see if it actually does manage to tweak that diagnosis? Here we go. Got my stethoscope ready. Okay, Mr. Gregory, it's time to listen to your heart. Oh, your heart is very fast, Mr. Gregory. It's 145 beats per minute. I'm just going to pause it there and see what the artificial intelligence comes up with on this occasion. So now it's thinking about it and it's saying that we have got a diagnosis of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation as its primary differential diagnosis. What does that mean? Well, paroxysmal means that it happens intermittently and atrial fibrillation means that we are having an irregular heartbeat. So basically the artificial intelligence thinks that this patient is having atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat, but intermittently, which is very plausible. Let's take a look and see why it thinks that in particular. So again, it's going to provide me with a contextually aware explanation of why it thinks that this is the primary differential diagnosis. So it says that the patient is a 64-year-old man who's been experiencing shortness of breath and dizziness over two months. After listening carefully to his heart with a stethoscope, it was detected that his heartbeat is very fast, 140 beats per minute. 
This could be an indicator for atrial fibrillation because a normal healthy heart rate for an adult is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. But it does also say that further tests should be done such as an ECG or an echocardiogram to help to confirm the diagnosis directly. Now on the front page as well, it does say some recommendations that I could do as a doctor to work out what could be going on with Mr. Gregory. For example, it says record the heart rate, ask about any recent changes in lifestyle, inquire about any previous medical history. So I have to say that is quite impressive that it's changed or tweaked his differential diagnosis just from the fact that we've given it some sensor information from our stethoscope. Now, of course, as a general practitioner, I wouldn't ordinarily, I would never actually diagnose a patient with atrial fibrillation just with those three symptoms from dizziness, shortness of breath and a fast heart rate. Of course, we would do more things such as a full history, a full clinical examination and even an, an ECG and an echocardiogram, which, of course, this actually does tell me to do because it does say without further tests like an ECG or an echocardiogram to confirm the diagnosis, a full diagnosis cannot be made. And now let's have a look at the recommendations as well. It does say to record the heart rate and the breathing frequency. Now, actually, that's really important because when you are checking a patient over, when you're doing their examination, you want to see what their respiratory level is um, or their respiratory rate. So ordinarily, this can be anywhere between 16 to 20 breaths per minute. So that means you look at their chest and it goes up and down. And normally about 16 to 20 is normal for an adult. Sometimes, however, if they are septic, for example, if they've got an infection, that respiratory rate may be elevated. And so it's asking me and it's prompting me, hey, to check out any other differential diagnoses, which could possibly be caused in this presentation. It's also asking me to ask about any recent changes in lifestyle uh, and stress levels as well. Of course, stress can certainly cause a high elevated heart rate, perhaps not so high, but it's something very important to ask about. And it's also inquiring about any medical history, including any previous illnesses and medications, because we know that there are certain medications that can change your heart rate and certain conditions can as well. For example, if a patient has got any thyroid problems that's undertreated, if they're hyperthyroid, being they're overactive in their thyroid levels, um, that can cause them to have an elevated heart rate. So this is actually quite interesting and it's quite important that we are getting these prompts because, as I said before, you cannot make a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation just based on those three clinical findings. You do need to really dig in deep and certainly further investigations like an ECG and an echocardiogram would be prudent for this sort of a clinical presentation. But I have to say, I'm quite impressed just from the outset that you can actually use things like smart sensors, like our smart stethoscopes, blood glucose monitoring, and you can feed that information into applications like Diagnosis Pad to come up with a possible differential diagnosis. What do you guys think? Is the future changing? Are we going to live in a world where we just plug in our Apple Watches into apps like this and it provides us with some sort of differential diagnosis? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And of course, I hope you guys have found this video useful. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave me a line in the comment section below. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.